through the epochs of time. Some individuals stand out not for their virtuous acts, but for the shadows they cast upon the pages of history. Today, we will reveal the captivating and chilling stories of these women, whose lives were marked by crime, mystery, and the unsettling allure of the unknown. All of them were punished, in one way or another. Some of them lost their status, others their lives. Back in the 17th century, whispers of witchcraft echoed through the country air. Surrounded by the natural beauty of the Scottish countryside, most of the villagers in Uldern were poor and uneducated, but they took pride in being honest workers. The life of Isabel Gowdy seemed ordinary. She spent most of her days wedding yarn, milking or cooking, but the tranquillity of her existence would soon be disrupted by the growing fear of witchcraft sweeping across Europe. Aye, Isabel, the whispers of witchcraft seem to dance through the air like the mist on the loch. Do you think there are witches among us? Perhaps instead of condemning our neighbours, we should seek to understand, to unravel the mysteries that shroud our world. It often seemed that women were at risk of being accused of witchcraft and tortured, especially during times of bad harvests. Therefore, it was just a matter of time before Isabel got the attention of the Scottish authorities. Aware that there was no way out, she braced for impact. Her vivid imagination and elevated words led her to provide shockingly detailed confessions about her involvement in a coven, interactions with the devil, and participation in supernatural activities. Isabel's detailed confession sent shockwaves through the community. But was she truly a witch, or was there a darker conspiracy at play? It is known that accusations of witchcraft always led to persecution and tragedy. Her confessions are particularly notable for their elaborate and fantastical nature, providing a vivid insight into the beliefs and fears surrounding witchcraft during that period. She signed her own death petition when she came forward as a witch. It is rumoured that her act had a political inclination since she despised Harry Forbes, the local minister, a zealous extremist who had a fear of witchcraft. But if you thought this was an intriguing story, wait until you hear about these two women's deadly reputations as master poisoners. Life in Italy during the 17th century was extremely difficult for females, especially if they wanted to divorce their partners. Born into a world devoid of opportunity for women, Julia Tofana was no ordinary lady. She was cunning, resourceful and determined to carve out a better life for herself and her fellow oppressed sisters. Julia didn't come from royal blood, but she inherited the gift of alchemy from her mother and she passed it on to her stepdaughter. Under the roof of a small boutique, Julia distributed her deadly potion under the guise of cosmetics, promising beauty youth and liberation. This underground trade fuelled her success, making her a legend among the desperate. Operating discreetly, she provided a sinister solution to those seeking escape from oppressive circumstances, but as her clientele grew, so did the risk of exposure. This is an example of someone who blurred the line between saviour and murderer. She made the poison aqua tofana, an odourless, undetectable poison that is believed to have killed over 100 men while saving just as many lives as well. Forty years later and across the Channel, in the heart of Paris during the reign of Louis XIV, a time of lavish opulence and intrigue, a shadowy figure emerged, casting a sinister spell over the city. The infamous poisoner Catherine Monvoisin held a notorious reputation, entangled in the web of the occult. Her connections to the aristocracy and involvement in dark rituals paint a vivid picture of a woman who thrived on the secret trade of poison. Regardless, the price paid to open the doors of wealth and status was imbued with the smell of death and burning flesh at every step. Being an excellent business opportunist, she took advantage of the harsh life of those times and opened a home for unwed mothers, helping women with unwanted pregnancies procure abortions or helping lower-class ladies get rid of their babies after childbirth. With the help of corrupt priests, she arranged paid satanic rituals in the catacombs underneath her home for her clientele. These black masses were dark inversions of a traditional Catholic ritual in which a naked woman would act as an altar. The turning point came with the affair of the poisons in the 1670s, 
This scandalous episode exposed a network of poisoners, black magic practitioners, and those who sought to manipulate the fate of others through dark arts. The main focus was none other than King Louis XIV and his complicated love triangle. It is said that for 13 years the king's food was tainted with a mixture that included drained blood and mashed baby bones. The affair of the poisons exposed the dark side of the French aristocracy, leaving scars that would echo through the ages. After a long and complicated trial, Catherine found her end on the burning stake. If you thought that hearing about using poison for a change of fate was controversial, then you haven't heard about the tragic fate of Beatrice Tensi. Sometimes the greatest villains are those disguised as family. Her father was one of the most cruel men that this channel has encountered so far. He never hid his evil nature. Authorities were well aware of the despicable things he did to everyone he encountered, from his employees to his wives and children. But his wealth held more value than the morals of Italy's justice system. It is said that when he found out two of his sons died, he threw a party to celebrate getting rid of them. Beatrice endured unspeakable abuse at the hands of her father, and as the tension reached a breaking point, a sinister plot was hatched. Tired of waiting in vain, after years of letters begging for help from the authorities, Beatrice decided to take justice into her own hands. My dearest brother, I write to you in desperate search of assistance and intervention in the precarious situation I find myself trapped within. Our father ceaselessly humiliated me with unspeakable acts of malevolence. His wrath descends upon me mercilessly, day after agonizing day. My spirit has been extinguished, replaced by a flickering flame of resistance and a glimmer of hope for salvation. I beseech you, brother, to extend your utmost empathy and assist me in plotting an escape from this living nightmare. In your hands, I place my fragile trust, and I pray that you may be the beacon of hope that guides me through this tempestuous darkness. Yours sincerely, Beatrice Sensi. On a dark and stormy night, helped by two men and her family members, they attacked Francesco while he was sleeping at his castle in Petrella Salto. After that, they threw his body off a balcony to make it seem accidental. The people of Rome, who knew what kind of man Francesco Cenci had been, figured he deserved his fate and sympathised with Beatrice and her conspirators. However, Pope Clement VIII, ruler of Rome and the papal states where the crime had taken place, had other ideas. In this tumultuous trial that captured the nation's attention, Beatrice, her mother and her brother Giacomo were found guilty of murder and condemned to death. If you found the tragic tale of Beatrice Sensi interesting and somewhat revolting, you must hear about the murderess which holds the Guinness World Records for the most prolific female serial killer in history. For that we must move forward in time to Hungary, where we encounter the blood-soaked legacy of Countess Elizabeth Bathory. Known as the Blood Countess, Elizabeth's insatiable thirst for power and beauty led her down a path of cruelty and murder. She was a very powerful noblewoman in Hungary. Smart, beautiful, rich, well-behaved. However, through the corridors of her castle, whispers of unspeakable acts emerged, as it was said that Bathory bathed in the blood of young maidens to maintain her beauty and vitality. It was alleged that she, along with her accomplices, engaged in sadistic rituals, torturing and murdering hundreds of young women within the confines of her castle. The stories of her crimes are accounted for by the testimony of more than 300 witnesses and survivors. The growing horror caught the attention of authorities, leading to Bathory's arrest in 1610. The scale of her crimes shocked everyone, but due to her influential noble status, she couldn't be properly arrested. Instead, she was confined to her castle, and the tales of her monstrous deeds became a cautionary legend. While the exact extent of her crimes remains shrouded in the mists of history, debate and possible conspiracy, the Blood Countess has left an indelible mark on the annals of true crime. Skipping ahead to the 19th century, the chilling tale of another noble lady unfolded in New Orleans. Delphine Lalori, a prominent socialite in 19th century New Orleans, hides a dark and gruesome secret. Lalaurie's public facade masked a horrifying reality within her mansion. 
the Lalori residence became a chamber of unspeakable horrors, as whispers of abuse turned into screams echoing through the French quarter. Known for her charm and status, Delphine concealed a sadistic nature. Rumours circulated about her mistreatment of slaves, but the shocking truth emerged in 1834 when a fire revealed the grotesque extent of her crimes. As flames engulfed the mansion, firefighters discovered a torture chamber in the attic. Slaves, emaciated and mutilated, bore witness to Lalaurie's cruelty. Accounts of Lalaurie's atrocities include reports of chained individuals subjected to unthinkable physical and psychological torment. The discovery sent shockwaves through the community, leading to a mob attacking the mansion in outrage. However, Delphine Lalaurie managed to escape justice. Her fate remains shrouded in mystery. The Lalaurie mansion, forever tainted by its dark history, stands as a chilling reminder of one woman's descent into madness and cruelty. Lalaurie unravels a harrowing narrative of power, privilege and the horrors that can lurk behind closed doors. These individuals, separated by time and space, each played a unique and haunting role in the historical tapestry of dark tales, leaving behind a legacy of mystery, crime and, in some cases, outright horror. History is often coloured by the blood-soaked tales of those who dared to defy the boundaries of humanity. If you enjoyed this dive into the macabre, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more intriguing stories from the depths of the human experience.